Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Studio here in Lytham and it's the day after the Masters 2016 and I thought what a better swing to do than the new Masters Champion 2016 Danny Willett's Golf Swing. So this was a video taken about a year ago actually. Um, I've managed to get it off from Golf Monthly, thanks for Golf Monthly for letting me use this clip. Um, this is him hitting driver and his swing has not changed much since this. I want to talk through what he does well why he does it potentially, and why it helped him continue to secure being the right place at the right time. So when things didn't go other players' way, Danny Willett was there to capitalise and took the victory. He took the, got the bit between his teeth, an amazing victory in the end, won by three. I think it was three. So here we see Danny in his driver setup. We're going to do a driver swing analysis because um, he drove the ball wonderfully well all, all tournament. Um, we see in his setup here a couple of key features. So first off, posture is, as you would expect, fantastic. Really good knee flex, great distance away from the golf ball. Very relaxed, yet stable, yet kind of powerful, all in the same model. I do notice that he does seem to put, apply quite a bit of weight towards his toes. He seems to slightly lean over. But he changes that during the golf swing. He seems to go from very much into his toes and neutralizes that back out as he actually starts to swing. And I'll, I'll point that out when, I, when it comes up. From the front view here, we see we drive a naturally ball position just inside left heel. Perfect. Um, we notice quite a strong grip here. So the left hand, we can see all of the emblem on the back of the left hand grip, which would imply it being quite strong. A strong grip would have the tendency to shut the face to path and to get that ball generally going too far left as, as a rule, but it doesn't have to be the case. Now, he does things in his swing that I feel he protects his grip from or his grip helps with the, with the swing that he has. Either way, they complement each other very nicely indeed. From that in his setup, I notice he has the the very conventional tilt in the upper body. So from the middle of his belt buckle to the middle of his chest, he has a slight tilt going backwards, but he does appear to be slightly left-sided in his lower body. His hip, left hip seems to be slightly forward or toward target. Then he slightly leans back, which gives him again, this very strong setup position. So what we know so far, he seems to be very strong in his setup, has a strong left-hand grip. He has the hip slightly forward, but sets the, sets the upper body back. And he, at the moment, appears to have his weight slightly towards the toes. He seems to just be leaning into his toes slightly. Now, I would say his takeaway is one of his standout movements. You'll notice it as he starts to move this club away from the ball, one of the most noticeable factors is he moves that weight in, back into the middle of his feet. And this golf club generally goes a little bit on the outside. Now, you'll see this if I just move this line out of the way. Just watch as he gets to about halfway back. There's a very noticeable gap between his hands and where his club head sits. There's quite a big gap between those two points. Now, I think there's a reason behind that. If that golf club stays what would be seen as being above plane for Danny, so if he goes back above plane, he will not then hit too far from the inside, which would be criminal for him with that strong grip. So it's kind of starting to make sense. This is, this is where... Is it, is it his takeaway that has prompted the grip or is it the grip that's prompted the takeaway? Either way, they complement each other very nicely indeed. There's more than one way to skin a cat, so, so to speak. So he takes that club a little bit on the outside of what would be perceived as being a normal takeaway. He takes it a little bit hingy and slightly on the outside. And you can see that from this front view as well. He, he, will, off, he will get a lot of wrist set early. So this angle here, there's a lot of wrist set early there. Um, as he starts to move that club away from the outside, he sets the wrist very, very early indeed, where you'll typically see golfers taking a much wider takeaway. You look at someone like McElroy, Adam Scott, those type of golfers, their hands at this position would be much further away from their body. So he gets a little bit of wrist set early, which again, puts him in good positions as he moves into the top of the swing. And we see this as he moves into the top of this backswing here on the right hand side. Again, we see a shaft angle that is typically steeper than the average tour pro. You'd normally see a tour pro swinging more along this line across his chest and across his, the top of his right arm. But again, that's for me protecting him getting too inside 
and therefore with a slightly closed grip, hitting the shot left and left and left, left with more left. So as he gets to the top of his swing, he then starts to turn the shoulders and flattens out that swing in the most fantastic of ways. He gets that left arm along the line of his shoulder, perfect. But you'll notice at the very top of his swing, see if I can draw a thin enough line here, his club face is ever so slightly closed. Closed because of the grip. You go back to that grip being too strong, his club face gets a little bit closed at the top. And again, this is when it's absolutely imperative that he doesn't hit too far from the inside, therefore just overdraw it or to straight pull it. That's why it's absolutely imperative. This is why he takes it with wrist hinge and goes a little bit on the outside. As Danny then moves down into the golf swing, he puts that club in a perfect downswing position. Now, I've not really seen any trap man numbers or GC2 numbers, or, but his path from, from into the ball looks very, very neutral, very square. Let me just show you very quickly. This is the angle of his downswing, but just notice the angle of the top of his backswing at the same hand position. Let me just take a few of those lines out, in fact. This is his backswing position. Shaft gets quite upright. And then it, as he gets to the top, he shallows that out. And then it continues to shallow out as he comes down. Now, just imagine that movement, this angle here, just imagine that movement if he had started going back on a more conventional plane angle, this drop of angle that he's familiar with would put him in so much trouble, it's untrue. His club, his club, if he was to, if he was to do it that way, his club would be down here somewhere. He would get super, super inside. That's why he has that takeaway that he has. That's why he hinges it slightly on the outside, gets a little bit steep, so that he cannot then drop it too far under plane. As he comes through the shot then, he's very, very neutral through the shot. Like I say, I've got no real figures, impact figures of what, he, what his path would be, but visually when I see it, it looks like it's maybe a one degree, two degree from the inside, from what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna leave it there just on that right hand side for the moment. Let's go back to top of back swing from face off. So we noticed that address he has that slight hip movement forward, slight tilt in the upper body going back. He then, uh, let me just pull in these lines. So he's got that slight hip movement forward, but slight lean back. He then as he moves the club away, he gets quite hingy, not too wide, which is seen as obviously it's helping him in his swing. That's, if he gets hingy, he can pick that club up steeper, which is what he does. But just notice at the very top of his swing, he still maintained this slight tilt in the upper body. He's moved away from it slightly, but he's continued that tilt quite nicely. His hips are just rotated as they've rotated, naturally as they rotate. He's moved away from this line that was next to his hip, which is perfectly, perfectly normal. As he then starts to come down, this is where he's, he gets into, a, for me, a very, very powerful position coming into the ball. Obviously that shaft looks like it's bent, but it's more of a camera, camera optical illusion, not anything that he's actually doing. He pushes that weight back into the left hip brilliantly because that's where he started, but he maintains and even creates more upper body hinge, kind of slant. That helps him hit up on the ball. So when he comes through the ball and hits up through the ball, he's maximizing his potential distance. It's awesome, it's very good to see. He then hits through the ball with super, super straight arms. Because if he was to flip this over too quickly, if he was to get his arms working or his hands working too early, with that grip, it's going left all day long. Now, didn't see him hit that many left shots at August. There was a couple of times when he, he got a little bit edgy and I think it may be on 15, uh, the tee shot on 15, the par five, he pulled it left and had to lay up. I think that's probably his weak shot. He would probably overturn it. That's why on 18, he teed it up on the right and he knew that he could just blast it down that kind of channel and, and it would stay straight or slightly turn left, still keeping him in safety. It's a great arm extension through the ball. And you can see very, very little hand rotation, very little arm rotation because of that strong grip. He doesn't need to. If anything, he needs to slightly hold that face off. Again, he continues to tilt really strong, balanced, athletic, not leaving a single mile per hour behind. Awesome. Now, just on a, on a very quick side note, sometimes I missed actually at the very start of the, of the uh, video analysis. Um, 
We noticed a couple of things. Stance is very level, knees are level, hips are level. But his shoulders always appear quite open. Now, I think that's a conscious thing. I think if he keeps his shoulders open, he can get that club on the outside of his hands. So if the, if the shoulders were open, he can get that club head on the outside of his hands that helps him. If he was to set up too square, I feel like that club would go back to more of a conventional takeaway where the club comes straight through his hands. He would then drop it on the inside and just be fighting left all day long. So he's kind of, he's worked around. There's not many weak golfers on tour that have a weak grip. Most great golfers have a strong slash neutral grip. Not many have a weak grip at all. Weak being too far around the left of the grip. Not many at all. Um, balance, power, speed. He then managed to nail it on his chipping and putting, which we're not even going to go into. An aggressive player. When, he, when it was his time, he stood up to the plate and he finished the job. That's what it takes to win the Masters. When it came to him, he finished the job. Awesome. So Danny Willett, this, like I said, this was 2014. So his swing's not changed that much from this, I promise you. I actually spent some time with him in 2014. Um, oh, so it's a, a bit of a, a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, but just class. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Guys, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the swing analysis using V1 um, here down at Quest Golf Studio, please do like the video. It's interesting to see tour players and how they use their characteristics to bounce off other characteristics to still make performance, which come, at the end of the day is the most important, still happen. They still make performance take place. Well done, Danny. Great victory. Um, just amazing. I can't wait to see how, how this develops and improves. Guys, thanks for watching. Do subscribe to my channel by clicking the big button here. Comment below. Do you like Danny Swing? Do you think he's got a future that's, that's just unbelievable? He's now world number nine. It's come out this morning. Guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to what's in his bag coming very soon. And we'll see you next time.